today we'll take a dive into the text tool in Affinity Photo. And actually, there are two text tools, the artistic text and the frame text tool. This video will only focus on the artistic text tool and make sure you watch until the end where I'll share some tips using the text tool you might not be aware of. The artistic text tool is the best choice if you want to add short pieces of text such as titles, headlines or logos. To enable the text tool, we can select it from the toolbar or use the shortcut key T. Keep in mind that the shortcut T toggles between the artistic and the frame text tool. If the frame text tool is selected in the toolbar, you can press and hold it and from the pop-up menu, you should now be able to select the artistic text tool. To add a text using the text tool, we actually have two options. The first option is just clicking on the canvas where you want your text to start. This will add a text layer to your document and you can start entering your text. The second method is by click and dragging while holding the mouse button. This way you can set the size of your text. As you move your mouse, you'll get a preview of the font size. Once you release your mouse button, the selected size will be set and you can now enter your text. Once you're done editing your text, you can click outside the text area to exit edit mode. But you can also use the keyboard by pressing the escape key. When you use the escape key to exit, the text tool will be still selected and you can continue by adding new text. Another convenient way of exiting text editing is by using the control or command enter keyboard shortcut. However, this time the move tool will be selected. With the move tool selected, you can quickly resize and reposition your text. By default, when resizing, the aspect ratio will be locked. But by using the move tool modifier shift, you can override this. Also, all the other move tool modifiers work, like the control or the command modifier, which will resize the text from the center, or the control modifier on the Mac, which will resize and rotate the text from the anchor point. Text layers are never destructive. You can always modify the text. If you have the move tool selected, you can click on it once to select the text layer. And when you click the second time, it will switch to the edit mode. Or you can just double click the text layer with the move tool. If the text layer was selected before you double clicked, the word where you double clicked will be automatically selected. Of course, you can also use the text tool itself to edit existing text. Just move your mouse to the text and the mouse cursor will change to a text cursor icon. Just click and the text cursor will be placed in the text. Instead of clicking, you can also select a part of the text by dragging with the mouse while the text cursor is shown. If the text was already selected, Enabling the text tool will directly switch to select the text to edit mode and your text cursor will be placed at the beginning of the text. What I really like about text layers in Affinity Photo is that the text selection and editing always works even if the text layer has been transformed. As you have seen, I was able to edit the rotated text in real time. When we have the text selected or have the text tool enabled, you'll notice that the top toolbar shows the text options. Here you can change the typical properties of text, like the font used, the font size, the font type, and so on. For more text properties, you can enable the text panels from the window text menu. There's a lot you can customize, and in this video, I'm not going to dive in all these properties, as this is a separate topic itself. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a follow-up video explaining all these properties. You might have noticed that when the text is selected, the changes will apply to the whole text. However, we can also use the text tool and select the text of which we want to modify the properties. If you're in the edit mode and no text is selected, the changes will apply for the next characters you are going to type in. One thing I didn't mention yet is changing the color of text. This can be easily done by using the color panel. The text layers act like curve objects. You can set the fill color and the outline color. To change the outline thickness, 
we need to switch to the node or the pen tool. When the text is selected with these tools, you can modify the outline border to your liking. Here are some tips working with text. Quickly selecting text. You can select multiple separate words by using the command or control selector while selecting text. Or use the double click with command or control to add a word to the text selection. Triple clicking will select a line and clicking quickly four times will select the whole text. But you can also use the command or control A shortcut to select the complete text. Changing the font size unit. By default, the size of the text is expressed in points, regardless of the units set within your document. If we want the text size to reflect our document units, we can go to the settings and under user interface, toggle the show text in points option. Moving the text. When we have a text selection, we can press and hold the mouse button and then drag the text to move the text to the position we like. It is just a quicker way of using cut and paste to move the text. Showing and hiding all the text. When you're working on a design and want to hide all the text quickly, you can use the text menu and choose hide all text, which can be very useful sometimes. To bring the text back, we can use the show all text menu. Keep in mind, this does not affect your layer visibility settings. So the text that was hidden in the layers will not get visible. Personally, using the settings, I have added a shortcut to these menu items, which allow me to quickly toggle the text on and off. Right clicking on text. When you're editing text, you can right click to get some quick options for capitalization and inserting special characters without the need to open up the text panels. Pasting curve objects. You can copy curve objects and paste them in your text, which is pretty mind-blowing. In the past, I did a video on this, so make sure to check the link in the description if you want to know more about it. The even crazy part is that you can still modify the curve. Just awesome. Importing text from a file. Did you know that you can import a text directly into a text layer? Make sure the text layer is selected and is in edit mode. When you now use the File Place menu, you can select the text file. The contents of the text file will be inserted into the text box. Pretty cool. Keep in mind though that the default font settings will be used for the inserted text, which in my case is Geneva 12 points. By the way, you can change the default text font style by selecting a text and then using the Edit Defaults menu. First select Synchronize from the selection and then use the save action from the same menu. Text on a path. Affinity also allows you to align text on a path. First, let's make sure a curve object is selected. While the object is selected, we can enable the text tool and while the tool is enabled, we can move the cursor close to the selected object. And when the cursor is close to the curve, the mouse pointer will change into a T with a curved line. When we now click, the path will be converted to a curved path text. Keep in mind that you will lose the original object, so it would make sense to first make a duplicate before applying this step. The text box is now aligned to the path. We can edit the text as usual. As you might have noticed, a start and an end handle is now shown in the path, which allows you to expand or restrict the portion on which the text will follow. The start and end handles are indicated by the light green and orange triangles. By moving these handles, you can now control the position of the text on the path. We can use the shift key modifier, which allows you to move the whole text. By using the control key modifier, it will move both handles symmetrically. When the text becomes too long, it will flow onto a second path, the below path, or wrap around to follow the path in an opposite direction. If this occurs, an additional pair of start and end handles, colored dark green and red, will become available, so this new path can be adjusted separately. By the way, another way to create a text path is by using the layer menu. Select the curve object, use the layer convert to text path menu. 
The path is now converted to a curve path for text, and with the text tool, you can click and enter your text. We can adjust the gap between the curve and the text by using the baseline setting from the top toolbar. Another useful button in the toolbar is the reverse text path. This will flip text to the other side of the curve path. Pretty cool. There's one button in the top toolbar which is also available when a text on a path is selected, and it is the text frame button. I still haven't figured out what this does. If you know, please do share in the comments. The path of the text can be modified by regular tools. For example, with the Node tool, I can adjust the curve. For resizing, you actually have two options. You can either resize the curve itself and the text will adjust itself to the newly resized curve. Or you can use the secondary handle, which will also scale the text without breaking your design. That was a lot of information and I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions or want me to do a follow-up video with more detail on a specific subject, don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.